Sit down right there. Just you sit down right over there. No. This is completely unacceptable. You. I'm not finna this is taking. I've been nothing but nice to your ass. Let's go. Ashley Taylor's journey is filled with controversy, frustration, and those eyebrow-raising moments that could make a reality TV producer blush. Strap in because this ride is about to get bumpy, folks. Hello, everyone. Before diving into today's roller coaster of the craziest moments that went viral on My 600 Pound Life, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell to stay in the loop on all these unbelievable stories. Ready for this wild ride? Let's go. And the struggle I'm having is starting to stop me from taking care of myself. Even with basic things such as getting myself clean, because I can't reach all my foes. I just don't have the ability at times because of the pain and the fatigue that I have, and it terrifies me. It terrifies me to know that my body is starting to shut down and starting to decline. Picture this, a pint-sized Ashley battling with a love affair with food that started before she could even spell calories. By age seven, she was already tipping the scales at 200 pounds, a feat that most adults achieve after one too many Thanksgiving dinners. And by 14, her weight had skyrocketed faster than Elon Musk's Tesla stocks. It's a tearjerker, really. Think Titanic, but with more pizza. So I got really big and everyone took notice of that. And I tried my best to lose the weight, but it's just food is like my only friend. Food is my only outlet. Like food comforted me. And things in my life kept going wrong right after that. First, when I found out who my father was, because we had this family friend, and I found out that he was actually my dad when I had a DNA test. But let's not just talk about weight gain. Let's dive into Ashley's personal horror show. From intense bullying that would make mean girls blush to a series of life-altering traumas, including being abandoned by her father and facing off against the neighborhood bully who made the Grinch look like Mother Teresa, Ashley's life could easily be a soap opera script rejected for being too dark. But that changed when I was 16, because that's when she had a seizure and she fell out the chair. And my aunt found her, and we had to rush her to the hospital. It turned out that my mom needed long-term care. She had to go immediately to a nursing home. So that's where she's been the last 10 years. My mom never got to come home. But when I found out, okay, she's not coming home, it took a toll on me, like I wanted to die. So I turned to food. And if you thought things couldn't get worse, Enter the loss of her beloved grandmother, an emotional gut punch that would make even the stoic doctor now reach for the tissues. Alone and adrift, Ashley found solace in the arms of an unlikely companion, food. Because why confront your feelings when you can devour a tub of ice cream faster than a TikTok challenge? So that he can feed them more food. So I knew I couldn't stay there. I picked up the clothes, put them in the car, and I didn't look back. I went to a shelter. I had to get my number changed, so he couldn't find me. But once I got to the shelter, I was in a room with four other people, and I met friends. I made friends, you know. Enter Dr. Now, our hero in a lab coat, offering a lifeline to Ashley in the form of dietary advice and a reality check stiffer than a Hollywood divorce settlement. But here's where the plot thickens faster than a custard left in the sun. Ashley's commitment to Dr. Now's diet plan was as consistent as Florida weather, hot one day, stormy the next, and downright unpredictable the rest. So you have no support system to help you except yourself. I mean, I have no other choice but to do that. So uh, you eat at home or you eat out? Uh, most of the time I eat out because I don't cook. So on a typical day, what do you eat out? Um, normally I eat like fast food. OK. What do you get to eat? Mm, normally it's just like two or three things. When do you eat next? Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot. Fast forward to the final weigh-in, a moment of truth more nerve-wracking than waiting for your crush to reply to a risky text. Despite her claims of progress, Ashley fell short of qualifying for gastric bypass surgery by a mere two pounds. 
The tension in the room was thicker than a Kardashian family feud, with Dr. Now's disappointment palpable enough to make Gordon Ramsay's kitchen tantrums seem tame. Ashley, don't do it. No, don't do it. Oh, God, I can't, uh, this is going all wrong. So if you stick with the diet and you eat low calorie, you should lose more weight. Is that hard to understand? Mm-hmm. 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 Think about that really hard before you say that. Oh, my God. I need a minute, because this is going all wrong. And I'm trying to be respectful, but this is just. And then the climax we've all been waiting for. Ashley's showdown with Dr. Now. Tensions reached a boiling point faster than water in a cheap microwave as words were exchanged hotter than a jalapeno eating contest. Ashley, fueled by frustration and a dash of rebellion, stormed out mid-appointment. A dramatic mic drop moment that left us all wondering what's next in this roller coaster of a journey. Ashley's story is more than just a weight loss story. It's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit against all odds. Do not gonna do me like that. You know, y'all ready to go? Cause I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's move. You will get trampled. Um. Miss that bastard. I would take a couple deep breaths. Let's meet Lee Sutton, a guy facing life's unexpected hurdles since he could barely tie his shoelaces. Picture this, new stepmom, step siblings, basically a real life version of Cinderella gone wrong. But I can't even take the time to worry about myself because my boyfriend can't do anything for himself anymore. You really help me be for her. Yeah. All right. So I have to help him before I can take care of myself. But wait, it gets darker than a grim fairy tale. At nine, one of these charming step siblings decides to add sexual molester to their resume, making Lee's childhood a living horror movie for three long years. Imagine the shame, the silence, the sheer absurdity of it all. And what does Lee do? turns to food for solace, naturally. By the ripe old age of 10, he was pushing 230 pounds, like a heavyweight champ of emotional eating. But my dad remarried, and my stepmom had three kids already. So with the cousins that lived with us, there was eight kids in our family growing up. And when I was nine or 10 years old, one of my siblings sexually abused me. That went on for three years. I didn't tell anybody over shame and embarrassment. It's one of those things that none of my family talk about, even to this day. And it's really messed with my head. So food is how I dealt with it. Fast forward through the years, and Lee's tipping the scales at a staggering 714 pounds. That's when he decides enough is enough and enters into Dr. Now's office, hoping for a miracle cure. Cue the awkward silence as Lee and his girlfriend Rena face off with Dr. Now. Spoiler alert, it's not excitement hanging in the air, it's a cocktail of disappointment, awkwardness, and a faint whiff of desperation. Why? Hold on to your snacks, folks, because here comes the punchline. Well, I'm glad you made it okay. So let's take a look at your medical history and your current situation. All right, Lee, you are 714 pounds, and Renee, you are 549 pounds. And you both have significant health issues as a result of your weight. Renee, you're diabetic, and you take an enormous amount of insulin. Yes. The same seems to be the case for Lee, too. And I see you're on oxygen. 
So you're no longer... Round two at Dr. Now's clinic is like a bad sitcom rerun. Lee's barely shedding nine pounds post-surgery, while Rena's dropping pounds like they're hot. Classic case of not playing by the rules, Lee. Dr. Now lays down the law with some tough love. Surgery isn't a magic wand. It's more like a wake-up slap in the face. Without it, Lee could have been a human blimp by now. But guess what? Reality hits Lee like a freight train, and he pulls a dramatic exit, storming out like a diva on a bad day. Can you blame him? Sometimes facing the truth is harder than a diet without carbs. Your last appointment? Mm. Okay. You just had your bypass about two months ago. And when you left the hospital, you were down to 546. So you lost only nine pounds instead. But Renee has lost almost 50 pounds at the same time. And she hasn't even had her bypass yet. What in the world is going on with you? Enjoying the drama? Give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments. Stay tuned because Stephen Asante's story is about to get even crazier and more intense. Stephen Asante's journey on the show is nothing short of a wild ride, one that's both jaw-dropping and filled with moments that make you question humanity. Stephen's story kicks off with him weighing over 730 pounds. That's right, 730 pounds. How did he get there? Well, his relationship with food could make a fast food chain blush. He consumed a shocking amount of junk food, with pizzas, burgers, and soda being his best buddies. Talk about a dysfunctional family dinner. Really, a week before I came here, because I got kicked out of a previous hospital for ordering a pizza. But now this hospital is asking me to leave because they can't help people my size because I'm too morbidly obese. But Ken Hospital has been trying to make the arrangements for transport for me to go out of state. Growing up, Stephen turned to food for comfort. Let's face it, we all do that sometimes, but Stephen took it to a whole new level. Food became his escape from reality, like a bad rom-com where food was the leading lady. As his waistline expanded, so did his list of health problems. But was he ready to change? Oh no, that's where the drama begins. Since Stephen left about four months ago, things have been better here. I don't really like him much because we just don't get along. He's a big boy that just tortured me all day. Stephen's family was, let's say, a hot mess. His father, Stephen C.R., tried to help but often ended up enabling his habits. Picture this, a parent handing over a pizza while saying, you really need to eat healthier. His brother Justin wasn't exactly his biggest fan either, and their relationship was as rocky as a boulder-filled mountain. Steven didn't make it any easier with his diva-like tantrums and manipulative behavior. I meet with the surgeon. I just hope that he accepts me for the gastric bypass surgery. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. I'm pretty excited about going to Texas because I've had a lot of time to mentally prepare myself, so I think I'm ready for everything when I arrive. And I'm willing to do whatever they ask me to do. Enter Dr. Now, the legendary weight loss surgeon. Steven knew he needed help, and let's be real, he wasn't going to find it at the bottom of a cookie jar. His first visit to Dr. Now was a spectacle. Imagine a teenager in a principal's office, but with a lot more whining and a few extra hundred pounds. Stephen was all excuses, blaming everyone but himself for his situation. Dr. Now, unimpressed, delivered a reality check that hit harder than Stephen's favorite meatball sub. Everything look okay. Okay, Justin? He's talking. He's looking at us and us through the camera. All right, Justin, when you're ready to talk, let me know. But we get the echocardiogram and see what his heart is doing. Yep. And then he can go home and we give you the receptor result later. Okay. Doctor Now didn't sugarcoat anything. He laid it out clearly. 
Stephen needed to lose weight, stick to a strict diet, and attend therapy sessions. No more excuses or it's over, was the gist. But did Stephen listen? Spoiler alert. Not really, instead he threw tantrums that could rival any toddlers, complete with tears and screams. Get out. You want me to get out? Get out. All right. Well, why, get out. Did you, why did you stay here? Get out. You should stay, don't, don't be an idiot. I'm going. I'm just saying you should stay, don't be an idiot. No, I hate his guts. Yeah. You have a chair. Nobody's speaking English. By the first follow-up, Stephen had barely lost any weight. Surprise, surprise! Doctor now called him out, questioning his commitment. Stephen, in true form, blamed everyone else because accountability wasn't on his menu. Watching this, you couldn't help but think, is he here to lose weight or audition for a soap opera? He think the world should revolve around him like a child does. And that is not acceptable behavior. Steven. Hey. How are you today? Okay, how are you? All right, so you seem like you have an issue getting along with hospital staff, and I'm not liking what I'm hearing. At times, you know, um, I, I sometimes I get frustrated. I tell them, if I act like a kid, I want you to treat me like a kid. Then we saw some improvement, but only because Stephen feared being kicked out of the program. He lost around 30 pounds, but it was clear he hadn't fully embraced the changes. It was like trying to diet while living in a bakery. His progress was minimal and his attitude still unbearable. Who knew that losing weight required effort? Certainly not Steven. Right? We're gonna uh, periodically check with him. We're gonna have a home health, and he definitely gonna need a psychiatric evaluation and consult. Okay, I'm hoping that I can get a flight up tomorrow morning so I can be there by okay. tomorrow. All right, that'd be great. Well, Dr. Now, thank you for calling. All right, bye bye. bye. Okay, bye. Why? Why is he doing this when he knows this is his last opportunity? By the third visit, it was more of the same drama. Stephen had lost some more weight, but was still not taking responsibility. Dr. Now's patience was wearing thinner than Stephen's willpower. The tension was palpable, with Dr. Now questioning if Stephen was really committed to changing or just enjoying the attention. And honestly, at this point, it felt more like the latter. I am on the way to Stephen's house. I received a call that he wasn't answering the door, nor is he responding to uh, phone calls. That's not like him. It's been a little over two months since Stephen left the hospital, and he missed his last doctor's appointment. I'm not sure if it's because he's hiding something. By the end of the episode, Stephen lost about 150 pounds, which was significant, but nowhere near where he needed to be. Watching him struggle with basic tasks post-surgery was a mix of frustration and a twisted form of entertainment. You couldn't help but think, come on, man, you've got this. But also, really, another tantrum. So what did we learn here? Maybe that sometimes the craziest moments come from those who fight themselves the hardest. So here's what we're going to do. I'm suspending you from the weight loss program. And you're going from here to a drug addiction program. Because right now, there's nothing we can do to wake you up. I'm not going to turn the news on and hear about 700 pound man overdosing. So we need to try something different. Okay? Yep. All right, I wish you the best. Thank you. Kine couldn't even stand up by herself for more than 45 seconds. Yep, you heard that right, folks. Even a quick trip to the bathroom turned into a team sport. Her nieces, Elisa and Deja, were the MVPs during shower time, while her nephew took on the vital role of walking assistant. Everyday activities turned into Olympic events for Kine. I have to have help now to do that. Alicia, come on, babe. I'm ready to get washed up. I 
Alicia is 16. If I'm gonna take a good shower, Alicia helps. Or if Deja's here, she helps. Deja is 19. And she's in college, so she's in and out of the house here. Rewind to her younger years. By the tender age of 10, Kane already tipped the scales at over 150 pounds. By 13, she was cruising between 230 and 240 pounds. But hey, high school was still a blast for her. She had a boyfriend, went to prom, and enjoyed the typical teenage experiences. Her weight? Just a minor footnote in her happy life. She kept eating more and more, blissfully ignoring the ticking time bomb. You know, denial isn't just a river in Egypt. So I got bigger, and by the time I was 14, I believe I was around 230 or 240 then. But I don't feel like I missed out on anything during that time because of my size. So I was happy in high school. I dated. I went to prom. So I didn't see a reason to change how I ate. So I kept eating more and gaining weight. And I graduated from high school at 17. After high school, Kane got herself a job and moved out of her parents' house. Independence meant she could dive headfirst into the deep end of fast food and binge eating. She hit 400 pounds without breaking a sweat. Movement was still manageable, so why worry, right? But here's the kicker. Her weight kept climbing, turning her life into a slow motion train wreck. But that independence wasn't good for my eating habits. I didn't buy groceries. I ate out. I was making my own money. You just drive through. So my eating habits changed for the worse. And it was at that time my weight had gotten up to around 400 pounds. But I didn't feel bad because I could still move around pretty good. I was still moving and working and, you know, Keeney had dreams of a bigger family, but her weight was like a giant roadblock, causing infertility and a slew of other health issues. Then, life decided to dropkick her. She lost her mom, and a tornado obliterated her house. And how did she cope? More food, of course. Because why not add another scoop of misery to the plate? It's only gotten stronger, but there were some struggles. Infertility can put a strain on the relationship. I just always figured that once I found someone that I wanted to settle down with, I'd get pregnant, we'd have kids, we'd go on with life. But I wasn't getting pregnant. I was diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it did attribute to weight gain, and that devastated me. At 41, Kine decided it was time for a change. Enter Dr. Now, the miracle worker for the morbidly obese. Kine tipped the scales at a staggering 614 pounds. Dr. Now laid down the law, a strict 1-200 calorie diet and daily exercise. His goal? Lose 75 pounds in two months. Easy, right? Not when you're the one managing the food at home. Talk about being set up for failure. I'm sure that a doctor would tell us they were all overweight. They all are overweight? Okay. For their age okay. and height, yes. And did anybody in the family would tell you you're eating too much, you don't eat that much? Or would they, they tell me that? Yeah. No. Nobody tell you that? No. Okay. No one's going to step on my toes. Well, the dynamic seems to be that you get everyone to enable you. Two months later, she weighed in at 592 pounds, shedding just 22 pounds instead of the prescribed 75. Dr. Now wasn't amused. Keeney got defensive, throwing shade with, you're not a magician and you're not a god. You're just a doctor. Ouch. The tension was thicker than her calorie intake. Why don't you show me that? And everybody can buckle down and follow the diet for a few months. And if you don't do that, the reality is you don't want help. What you want is somebody to do the work for you. So if you expect us to be magically make you lose weight, that's not going to happen. I never asked you for magic. You're not a magician and you are not God. You are a doctor. You're exactly right. I'm the doctor. Despite 
the rocky start, Kini grudgingly stuck to the diet. Doctor Now referred her to Dr. Paradise, a psychotherapist who suggested she write a letter to her late mom. Processing her grief was supposed to help her cope better. Whether it worked or not, who knows? Grief and dieting are a messy combo. And it's already got me really emotional. Good grief. But I think the hardest part is going to be going to her gravesite to read it to her. I was never able to get any closure from losing her because of my size. I couldn't go to her burial and say goodbye. And it's one of my biggest regrets. By her third appointment, Kine weighed 543 pounds. Progress, but not enough. Surgery dreams were put on hold due to high white blood cell counts. Another twist in her roller coaster journey. So, will Keeney's dream of a new beginning ever come true? Or is she stuck in this vicious cycle forever? Keeney's story is a testament to the human spirit's resilience, or perhaps its stubbornness. If these crazy moments made you laugh, cringe, or cry, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell. Share this with your friends, because everyone loves a crazy transformation story. Become life friend if it gets any worse. So that is something that we need to clear that out. So we'll get you some antibiotic, and I also want you to go to a hematologist to make sure that there's no other issues contributing to that elevated white count. Okay. The other thing is that uh, your record showed that you had some episode of flare-up of um, um, rapid heartbeat and atrial fibrillation. 